I V M. Good evening to everybody listening in. Evening because that's when we are recording. I'm sure you listen to it when you work out in the mornings. We don't, so I don't know what you just listen to a podcast <laughs> early in the morning or while you're driving, which I don't do anymore. Not that I ever used to. But hello, hello to everybody. It's just me and I here on this episode today. Shivram decided to kind of back out because he's got football fatigue, I guess. Just too many or, matches. Going or on. what is happening, Sapre, is that we just realized that there are some live games going on. I think he's that probably is. watching those live games and realized that is probably more important than coming and recording a football football episode. That is true. That is true. So while we don't know what's going on, we'll just keep a tab on our WhatsApp because Shivram's going to keep pinging, uh, especially with Spurs <laughs> a goal down. Against Southampton. Yeah, I was just coming on here and I have this full speech prepared on how Antonio Conte has changed the way Tottenham Hotspurs are playing. And I suddenly realized they are 1-0 down to Southampton, man. Come on. So that's not the only manager who's disappointed you this time. Sorry, guys. That's not the only <laughs> manager who's disappointed you this time. <laughs> I'm a big Manchester United fan who has been utterly disappointed. We'll talk about that as well uh, after we come back from the break on the other side. A hundred bucks. That's all it takes to begin your journey with Bitcoin and Ethereum. No, really. With CoinSwitch, you can start investing in over a hundred cryptocurrencies with just hundred rupees. On top of that, there are zero charges for deposits and withdrawals, so you can trade, buy, sell, however and whenever you want. All of this, plus their extremely intuitive interface, makes CoinSwitch the perfect app for beginners in the crypto space. But don't take my word for it. Just download CoinSwitch for free and try it out for yourself. If you'd like more information on cryptocurrencies, tune into a show about crypto with me, Rohan Joshi, my new adventure on IBM Podcasts. Coin switch. Kuch to badlega. All right, that's a quick break. Not as big as the break that United had before the match that they played against Newcastle. I'm utterly, utterly disappointed. I don't have enough adjectives because I've used almost all of them to describe what I feel as a United fan. I don't know what else to say. So, so just... here's here's where I'm at. Okay, we waited a long time to watch them play. We almost forgot that they played in the in the Premier League. We were wondering where they were for I don't know how many weeks it has been since we've last seen Manchester United, and they come and give us that performance. Uh, it was it's Newcastle. Yeah, this is going to be the richest club in the world that is going to be in the Championship next season, and. <laughs> And honestly, if it wasn't for Edinson Cavani, it's not like United had chance after chance after chance and they kept hitting the woodwork or Fred kept hitting the woodwork or something of that sort. It was abject. It was absolutely abject. And more disappointing was, I think a lot of fans in England travelled. And Did to you? have both Bruno Fernandes and Cristiano Ronaldo storming off at, at the final whistle. I mean, I think decency would suggest that you go and applaud. I'm usually not for these gestures but I thought I felt yesterday that was a bit a bit off from both of them and particularly Fernandes I don't mind Ronaldo he saved United a fair few much in, in this season but Fernandes what, what has happened to him he was your favourite player Sapre for the past year or since he's joined at least year and a half too he has dropped off big time as it, as it currently is so I have an ap- entirely different take on What's going on? Right? I was always of the school of thought that Ronaldo should not come to United because I knew this is exactly what's going to happen. When he comes, he will kind of want the game to be played around him, which is not bad. He's a, he's a terrific player, no doubt about it. But I think if you've got him to score goals, I don't think scoring goals was an issue for United last season. Right? So, and with Bruno, even with Portugal, when Ronaldo and Bruno played, they don't. Bruno doesn't really get the applause. He doesn't do as much. Mm. Uh, there are always other members of the team who kind of do that. In with your point of the way they stormed off, I'll give Bruno, I'll let him go because in a previous match, I think there was Ole's last match or maybe the match against Watford, which mm. could be the same match I'm talking about. Yeah, and yeah, it was the, his last match, right, the match right, against so he, Watford. Yeah, yeah, so he kind of called players back and said, you know, thank the away fans, etc. all of that. Ronaldo was throwing tantrums right from the yeah. 10th minute onwards, right? He's lost his shit on Rashford, on Sancho, everybody but on himself, right? And he should have arguably been sent off as well for that awful tackle that… Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, we've seen it given. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> so, I'm I'm disappointed. I don't… It is 4-2-2-2. Two, two, two. This is uh, f***ing shit nonsense. <laughs> it <laughs> just… <laughs> it doesn't work. I'm being very kind, right? Had I recorded <laughs> myself watching the match last night, that would have been a terrible thing to do. Mm. 
by its awful it's not what you know you know what that result has has meant right and i i wish we had chivra bhon here because now arsenal although they've played two games more are seven points ahead of united which also means that even if united win their two games in hand which also was probably unlikely they're not going to catch I, up yeah yeah look you know what i don't see this often and i'm sure i will never see this again but i'm very glad shivram's not on this episode right now <laughs> you would have screwed my happiness and how for multiple reasons a he did far better in fpl b mm-hmm. i told him to not captain lacazette and he abused me for that and thirdly the positions between arsenal and united so i'm very glad that he's not on this episode but i'm sure he's going to give I, i'll, I'll give you a pass time. for the i'll give you a pass for the lacazette thing because he's he ended up scoring a penalty it's fine it it wasn't like it was a great move to not captain him or a big miss to not captain him. yeah that's how people have gotten most points of ronaldo when <laughs> they've had in, in their team or jorginho for that matter right mm. uh so that's that this this team is not changing is not going to get too many chances to bring in people in january it's anyways a terrible market right now he's not going to get the kind of players he wants plus he's just going to they be there for 6 more months after january just till the end of the season so i don't know yeah yeah and it's really not like come Rag- ragnik comes from having you know coached too many world class players recently he was in moscow last he's not bringing anyone from locomotive into manchester united so there's no one like an antonio conte can go and tell his new club i want lukaku because i he played very well for me there, there is literally no one you would associate with ragnik who just pops in your head immediately so yeah, but but then do you see now fourth being a bit tough a bit is an understatement right now extremely mm. tough partial already there i'm sure they'll drop points but spurs are not going to drop as many points as we think they will unless what happens in this result will we'll get to see pretty soon so that's that enough about the united of manchester let's talk about the city of manchester i didn't kind of see the match but i i i was going through what happened and i think it was 3-0 up and then leicester got back with two mm. goals what happened they, in that they were 4 match? they were 4-0 in fact in about 25 minutes city were like 4-0 up and then leicester just came back they got three goals they came back to 4-3 but then it was 6-3 and i'm telling you it might have been a 6-3 result but pep guardiola wouldn't wouldn't have been too happy i don't think he's someone who you know even if he wins by a margin of three goals he's going to be pretty pissed off that his side could concede three and almost almost cost them a couple of points there against the lesser side let's be honest apre were not doing very well well this season and and city the way they started the game they should have just blown them apart in the, in that first half there was no way lesser should have got back in the game guardiola will not be a happy manager after that he'll be happy manager he got a lot of money off uh, ferran torres So I mean that even yeah, the week out yeah, for just, him. Yeah, yeah. What is it? Half an hour before we're recording, Barcelona have announced that Torres is ours until 2027. I, and I, I saw. Yeah. I, I also Dembele putting yeah. up some 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 <laughs> image. So I'm guessing his contract is up for renewal or they're negotiating. So he's going to be hmm. he's going to continue on a hospital bed in Barcelona for a few more seasons to come at least. And but you know Coutinho what? You know what about just out. just to go back to Ferran Torres? I feel I feel we missed out on him a little bit because I don't. I mean, we saw glimpses of what this guy was doing, yeah. Of, and yeah, did, and but then it just it just seems like he's leaving. Maybe, maybe he's he's homesick. I, I I don't know. We can't assume that. Maybe he just wants to go back to Spain. But this just seems like a little a rust move, and and I'm pretty sure he went to Guardiola, he went to City, and he said, "I want to go back home," and they didn't really stand. in his way although i get a feeling now that they have someone else's mind as a replacement as a center forward replacement because i'm counting ferran as a center forward that city would have played him as could be true i just thought he might he could have thought he would get his chances at city he was playing very well before joining no but but, but the last but, i heard he played for spain then he scored a few goals for city then he was injured that's the last i've heard of him i didn't know when he was fit again or etc etc so honestly it's a bit It's a bit confusing as to what happened there. Are you saying that's why Barcelona got him because he's injured? <laughs> Barcelona found <laughs> found fifty million from somewhere, which I'm going to put out a nice conspiracy theory here, and I know you'll enjoy this. It means they had the money to re-sign Messi, and they did not want to. It is not like they couldn't have re-signed him, but they had the money to re-sign Lionel Messi. I'm so happy, right? They had the balls to take a decision, knowing it will get a mm. backlash. That's how you get rid of players like Messi. How else would you do that? <laughs> I mean, I I wish Ole had the balls to say no. I don't want to get Ronaldo to United. It's okay if he goes to City. I'm sure he's mm. not going to be playing every match, given that he's being managed by Guardiola, not Zidane this time. 
but he didn't have the balls. Maybe that's the best way to get rid of somebody like Messi. Pochettino is not going to be able to do that. So I hope he comes to United in January. That is in, oh in, in God, the next this season. Is some, some I am going to bring back. To, yeah. <laughs> I am going to push for this narrative till the upper echelons at United hear me out. <laughs> that he's the only savior for United at this point in time. There is nobody else. Hand tag, tan, hag, whatever. People who come from Ajax, <laughs> either at United or otherwise, but, have but not is, done well. But that is exactly how it's going to be, right? Because you have Ralph Ragnick there. He's he's going to be moved upstairs, which is probably a director of football role or something of that sort in the management. And he's going to have a say in who who replaces him come the end of the season. Which is, I, I'm okay with that. I'm I'm just not okay with him using his style on the pitch. He's good. His media bites and the way he speaks about the martial transfer, etc. He's been mm-hmm. brutal at times. He's been very honest, straight-faced. It's good to have a man like that at the top of the helm, especially at a club like United, who's going through shit right now. And it saves the manager <laughs> from kind of doing the dirty work. Ragnik can do all that shit for him. But this is my theory. I need to. I, I have to do everything in my power to push for Pochettino. Klopp is not coming. Neither is Guardiola. Zidane doesn't want to come. There is no Conte. Uh, I think he's doing good at Spurs. I don't think. Why leave London for the cold, rainy Manchester? With Antonio Conte, I think now it's his mission. United did not approach him. He's. I think he. I think he has now. It's a personal affront for him that I need to finish better and show these guys that probably with a lesser squad I can do more. And you should have given me that Manchester United job in the summer when I was available. Yeah, looking at it right now, I don't think it's a lesser squad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he he's made Lucas Mora into a world class player. I'll just say that about. Yeah, you, and they've equalized some, as well. You had as sport, we talked, yeah. they've equalized. Harry Kane, surprise with a penalty. <laughs> oh, Salisu got a red card. Uh, shit. Yeah. Oh, we're Reggio got a yellow as well. Spurs great. resurrection live. This is this is a lot oh, of fun. wow. Oh wow! United <laughs> could get one against Norwich, one against Palace. Palace has got three against Norwich already. Arsenal got five. Norwich is a new Leeds. <laughs> but anyway, let's, let's get let's get back to Conte. You had a theory of him, you know, allowing Spurs to resurrect back from the shithole that they are, or they were, or they're going to be in. And now, but I did finish top four. I mean, it's Conte at the end of the day. He's, 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 he's got the hunger. He's a good manager. He's strong. He plays to his strengths. I don't mm-hmm. know what is that really stop him from getting his person into the top four. I mean, he's yeah, got if, if you have to choose at this moment between United, Arsenal and Tottenham and despite Arsenal's great form, I think you would go with, with Tottenham Hotspur because I think even if they get some points from their games in hand, they can go above Arsenal as well and with, with, with relative ease. So, Yes, at this moment in time, I think you would say Tottenham are absolute favourites. And with Antonio Conte there especially. That manager gives them so much that a lot of other clubs don't have. I thought United would get it because I drank the Ragnik Kool-Aid. I've drank it a lot. <laughs> but it's still it's still not showing on the pitch what, what he's trying to implement. Maybe it will. Maybe come the new year it will. But currently it it's not. It, I don't think so. They've made Nor- <laughs> Norwich, Palace and Newcastle play like Champions League teams against them. Mm. I don't think there's any chance. I mean, look at the teams you're competing against. Look at the kind of goals and the number of goals they're scoring. You are finding it difficult to get a shot on target. It's And it's Dahiya who's saving your ass. In every match, he saved your ass. Mm. By the way. So, with this style, I don't think they're going to get mm. too many goals. Okay, can I just add one last thing about United before before you move on? Because I yes, know you're please. trying to move on. But <laughs> uh, should Edin- Edinson Cavani now play more? I think maybe just start him because this guy seems like every time he's there, he'll get you a goal every two games for sure. And he seems to want to play. I mean, he he chases after the ball, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's all the usual cliches of them running more, and he he does all that. He does all that you need from a centre forward, and he's not phased by having a Fernandez or a or a Ronaldo next to him. Probably they can't play in the same team, him and Ronaldo, but he doesn't seem phased at all because he is an absolute superstar in his own right. He should play more. He was supposed to play more this season. But mm. then the injury happened and then with Ronaldo coming in and the jersey mm. swap and all of that, I think he was pissed off. Genuinely pissed off. I think he had a few things to say about his previous manager as well in a recent interview. He should ideally play more. But I don't… It's A, yes, it's the personnel. But for me, it's the the formation with which he plays for really good at atti- attacking forwards. Yeah. Or I, I think players. you put it best, right? You know, goal scoring was never the issue. The issue currently is one player, I feel, and that's Harry Maguire. Like the issue is is oh, just there. Yeah. I, you, usually you don't like picking on just one player. But honestly, on form, Lindelof and Varane should be the starters. It shouldn't be Maguire in that side. 
it, this is I, not working with Varane as well. I know it was Varane's mistake yesterday for uh, for Newcastle's goal as well. But 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 maybe the partnership of Lindelof and uh, Rafael will work a lot a lot more. Yeah, I mean, look, he's not going to have a game without any faults, Varane. It's okay. Every defender is allowed to do a fault, but he did really play well by the through the rest of the match. Varane was decent mm. at the back, uh, or maybe with Maguire at his side, anyone can look. <laughs> really, really solid. That's the case. They were wearing some fluorescent shoes and looking like absolute jokers. Varan still looks because he's he's achieved so much. So, he has the right to wear whatever he wants. So, it looks cool. He can carry it up. Mm. Maguire was looking absolute dimwit with those shoes. I mean, he should do everything to not be noticed in a match. That includes the kind of attire he has. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, he just doesn't listen to anyone. But, but enough about United. To trying to strengthen the squad in January. I don't know who's coming. I think Pogba signing the contract is a big I don't think Pogba is gonna play very well in this system anyway. Mm-hmm. He can't he can't do the running around. He can't well, where is where is Pogba? He's still hurt. He's injured. He's emotionally hurt. He is <laughs> He's just waiting for the team to to get some kind of form so that it there's mm. no pressure on him to come back and then you know perform immediately. But he'll play a few matches. That's his biggest worry right now for, for the United manager. Conte, I'm sure, wanted to sign a few players from Inter and, and otherwise from Italy. I don't know what's happening with them. He, I know he wanted Kier, but I think he's gone. He's undergone a surgery. He's out for about six Yeah, months. yeah. Simon Kier is he's done for the season. So He's yeah. done for the season, unfortunately. So, it's Chilwell, apparently. He, uh, yeah. Had, so yeah he's out was, for the season too. Yeah, that was a bit… I mean, that means Marcus Alonso, get him in your FPL side. I think that's the… And they're back to winning ways, fortunately, Chelsea. And they played uh, well. You know what? This game against they? Villa. I, they, they, and especially one player. And, I, and I'm and i usually low to criticise Lukaku. But I have done over the past few weeks. But this time, he finally… He came good. Yesterday, against Aston Villa. And against a pretty good Aston Villa side. They've been, they've been pretty, pretty good of late. Uh, this was one match where they were… They felt it felt like Aston Villa were out of their debt. Despite them, I think they took the lead also, if I'm not mistaken. But Chelsea came back pretty strong with Jorginho and Lukaku really leading the way. Yeah, well, Reese James' own goal, I guess. So he's mm. been screwing mm. up my FPL, uh, yeah. but I can't really. <laughs> unlike Maguire, I have too many players to blame for my debacle with the FPL team. I don't have this. Nothing much that really happened. We have a Liverpool uh, Leicester game impending, I think tonight. Uh, yeah, all I'm, that will I'm, be before anyone listens to this as well. So, yeah. we'll probably get to it the next but, time we speak. But it makes so many games, yeah, Sapre. It makes us sense predicting that game, right? I mean, they're still going to get trashed again. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just, probably. Let's it see. seems so, because now, I mean, Liverpool need to win that. The City have gone six points clear. If Liverpool lose one ooh. at this point, it, it, becomes a, it becomes a bit of a problem. It's so… Weirdly wonderful for a team that is performing the way City is. The only standout player that people can think of this season has been Cancelo. Mm. For them, with the amount of goals that they've scored and everything that they've done, I think Cancelo is the only person I can think of the team who can probably get into the team of best the eleven of the season so far. But hasn't this hasn't this like always been City? Like there was that famous thing about Aguero. He never got into the team of the season. Although, I think it's not comparable because that was just… How he didn't get in just baffles me into the PFA team of the year. That, that it, it's, it's weird. I mean, we got him into our team of the decade. I mean, that's… <laughs> I mean, if you can get into our team of the decade, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you arrived in life. Yeah, but we also had yeah. James Milner. So, that's where we are. Enough about that. Let's go to FPL. I don't want to talk about my scores. <laughs> because they're really abysmal. But let's talk about the league. Have there been any changes in the league? Let's see. Wow, there have been changes. I'm dropped to 186 now. So definite changes <laughs> in the mid mid range, mid to bottom range of. Um, mm. But no change. Uh, oh, there is change. I'm yeah. looking at this game. I, I would just like to say that this is also now what we're going to say now. May not be the actual case when anyone listens to this podcast because it will change game week by game week. But at the top, it's been, I think everyone's just stayed the same. Tangled up in blue, mm. no Brothers FC, Veramari, HLDNKRFC. He's basically uh, removed all the vowels, vowels from his surname. doesn't like vowels for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Consonant. And there's Ole Bature and Varan Bhatt. So two Ole Bature, supporters. Yeah. 
yeah. have been up there. Oh, party all night. There's some new guy. I haven't hmm. seen his name. Maybe I have. Sagnik Gupta. Well done. For Khan. Unless you just joined the league because you have a high score. Can people do that? Like if they listen to us and they're not in the league and in the last week, they realize that they can win the jersey by just getting in. You know, that would be a, a decent tactic. Maybe yeah, you can tell are, your friends. But these are good scores. I mean, I mean, tangled up in blue. Ishan Nagar is 12-61 points as of last week. Yeah, the I guy has been leading for phenomenal. for quite some time now. Yeah, he's he's been pretty consistent. It looks like we're going to have to. He says tangled up in blue. I'm assuming it's Chelsea and not City. So at this <laughs> rate, we're, we're, yeah, we're go- because I can't guess the first two. Globe Trotters FC. He probably want a basketball jersey. I I do not know. He's the, the, the Super League fan for some reason. Yeah. I don't know. Even this Vera Mari is he is he an Arsenal fan? Pablo Mari is that uh, is that? Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. Well, Haldan Kar FC will just want probably any any t-shirt that you buy for him. That that, that is that will work. <laughs> find a we, player who doesn't have a vowel in his name. I mean, we got someone at number nine who hasn't even taken the effort to put a name in. J D N W J. That's like our league code. Which it is not <laughs> our league code, but that is like our league code. So Sohan Maitri, if you're listening to this, please go in and change the name of your team. And talking about our league code, our league code is separate. Do you know it at hand or is this why Shivram needs to be on the podcast? This is why Shivram needs to be on the podcast. Needs to be on the podcast. So, you listen to our previous episode or listen to the one <laughs> next week. And you will get the code by which you can join the Football Should Ball Fantasy League. Actually, if you're an FPL player, you can just type in Football Should Ball in your search bar and the league should 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 come up. So, yeah. Go do Gosh. that. How have you been doing? Are you been doing any? I, no, I'm not. I'm consistently poor. <laughs> <laughs> no complaints there. Like I said, I've mm. dropped down to 186. Not that I was in the 100, but I've mm. always been in the same range. But I, I've seen the 200s at one point in time. So anything which doesn't start with the 2 mm. is, is motivational for me to play in, uh, <laughs> for the next game. But I think I'm going to go back so I didn't know. So I always used to wonder when FPL, the Twitter account, puts out the manager of the week and they got something like 136, 140 points. I'm like, how the, sh- how the f- can you even get those points? And I went to the comments and then somebody said, these are the kind of players who take like a lot of minus hits just to ensure that they appear in the game of the, the team mm. of the week. Kind of. So I think it's a good strategy. I'm not going to win. Forget winning. I'm not going to be close to the top 100 this time. <laughs> so I might as well do that, right? Yeah, At least go for mini, mini leagues I can get. And uh, it clearly yeah. now with all these uh, cases coming up, they're giving free hits uh, dime a dozen. Like every week FPL will say take one free hit, take one free hit. So you can definitely but, go for it. Yeah, I still don't know how to use them well. That's, that's, <laughs> the, that's the other problem. <laughs> so, well, the first rule, Sapre, is press the button after you've made your changes. That is mm-hmm. rule A. Yeah, and I was so desperate. I was going to triple captain Ronaldo yesterday, but I, just the good sense oh, prevailed. No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but Mama, I'm with you there. Like it's against Newcastle, you would expect him to get a goal. Like you would. Yeah, no, I think too much of my loyalty towards him. I'm going to kick him out. <laughs> Ragnik, you may or may not have the balls to do it in your team, but I do. I'm going to kick mm. him out of my team for sure. So just sad. Let's take a break. Let's uh, on the other side. Let's talk about any transfers that are impending. One I want to talk about specifically is Rafinha, and if there are any others that come to your mind, we'll talk about that as well. A wise man once said, "Traveling, it makes you speechless, then turns you into a storyteller." Well, listen to such travel stories and experiences exploring India on the Musafir Stories with us, Saif and Faiza. Catch us on the IBM website, app, or wherever you get your podcasts from. I, I genuinely thought Rafinha is moving to Bayern Munich. But now I've heard there is no agreement. Nothing of sorts. It's just that Bayern are definitely interested. Liverpool have mm-hmm. always been interested. And now Chelsea. Chelsea is interested in everybody around the world, <laughs> right? So, they are naturally interested in Rafinha. And he'll do well for them because Ziyech hasn't really been the player Chelsea thought uh, that he would be. I don't think he's been poor, but it just not been the kind of... But again, I explain, right? I mean, uh, I have... What, what, what do you have against I players? I don't. I don't. It's just that they were very hyped the one season that they had uh, in the Champions League. Mm-hmm. They're extremely hyped. Uh, good players, no doubt about it. But I think it takes a 
very different mentality and consistency to play uh, at at teams like Chelsea and you know Madrid etc. Um, I won't yeah. see United right now, but at least at Chelsea and Madrid right now. But there, Let's there see is other a point goals. there. I feel though because you look at Matas Dulit or even Frankie De Jong. Yeah. Even ZS. None of them have really, you know, taken the world by storm uh, yeah. after moving to quote-unquote big clubs. And and the Ajax currently with their new newest batch of players are doing as well as they were two years ago when they reached the Champions League semi-final. It's another superb batch of players that are coming. Through. So, yeah. It rem- it reminds me of the Southampton of a few years ago. Mm. And so, if I feel Ajax plays in the Premier League, they'll, they'll, they'll be in and around where Southampton is. Not right now, but at a time where like they had Van Dyke and a lot of other good players in the team. And I think yeah. Mane played for uh, uh, Yeah, and there is well. one connection between the two clubs there. Dusan Tadic, who played for Southampton then, is starring for Ajax now at what, 33, 34 years. So, he's been around at Ajax for some time. So, that's it. so let's get to Rafinha. I, it's really been a fantastic player to watch. Mm. You know, since last season when, when he came on. He's good on the ball, aggressive, wants the ball all the time. Good dribbler, good pace, decent finisher. I think he deserves his place in a good team. It would be sad to see him leave the Premier League because especially if he goes to Bayern Munich because who the f*** watches Bundesliga, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, it will be sad for me to, to not have him in the Premier League. At Chelsea, Pool, I'm sure he'll do very, very well. I, uh, okay, let's be honest. If he goes to Chelsea, you are still not going to be seeing him in the Premier League. Okay, he's not. There is no way he's getting into that level. Why they not? have like… Un- unless it's like… Some multiple COVID cases or something of that sort, they, you're not getting Rafinha in that side. I think the front three is the only place where you have a chance to get in. Back are you telling you not, me, Gaurav Sapre, that you will drop Timo Werner? Like, are you really telling me that? Like, come on. I mean, let, let's get real here. There are some players who are undroppable. Mr. Werner is one of them. So, there is no way that Rafinha comes ahead of on the left, on the right, wherever. That's true. Maybe that is the reason that Tushel wants to kind of get rid of Werner. But finally, <laughs> I have a talent, raw talent like Rafinha to get rid of Mr. Werner and his fantastic right, left foot. Any other, no big otherwise transfers impending. I, 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 heard, think, I think Farhan could be, uh, Farhan Torres could be pretty key. Barcelona, we, we know their struggles. If they, if they can get someone who can score them a few goals, Depay unfortunately hasn't been able to do that in the second in the, in the last few months, in the last two, three months. So, I think if Farhan can, they pl- because Barcelona have some good kids there. Yeah? With Pedri, with Gavi, with Ansu Fati. So, th- this is a club that, that could do well come three years later. And Farhan's young as well. He's what, 22, 23. So this oh, by the be- way, uh, Ansu Fati and Farhan Torres' release clause is the same. It's a billion pounds or dollars <laughs> or euros or whatever. So, focus on the billion, not on the, not on the currency. Just a billion of whatever is a lot of money. <laughs> right? So, but otherwise, I, I've heard of uh, Mourinho trying to get uh, Ashley Maitland Niles mm. to Roma. That could be his signing, first signing of the year. I'm sure he would want more players there. Otherwise, in the Premier League, no big players are being sought as such. I, I think City will do something. I think I alluded to it before. I ha- do you think Haaland could happen now? Maybe to Manchester City. Just bring him in into the eleven. I this is what I believe. If he leaves next year, right, Raiola is still gonna make money, probably mm. more. Right? Mm. He is so gonna make more because there's a release clause, so the fees you pay is less, so therefore your agent fees and your player commission yeah. goes much higher. Yeah. His his age is gonna be better as in six months more. He's not playing the champions, he's not a lot of pressure of like injuries, etc. He's playing very well in the league already. And he's enjoying his time there. Why not send him? And he'll still be Ripe old enough for a Madrid yeah, or, a City or City any big club. Because of that last sentence you made about enjoying his time there, recent form indicates recent. I mean, results indicate that he's not. He stormed off like Ronaldo esque in the previous game, because they were they have gone from I think the chance to be one point behind Bayern to now nine points in their winter break. Dortmund have really uh, they they have struggled in the last couple of game weeks. So and and he's not been happy. He's not been scoring. He's not been happy. He looks grumpy. This is why I suddenly get a feeling that City may have this ace up their sleeve. Oh, with, that attitude, million. with that <laughs> attitude, he's not going to get into Pep's team for sure. But Madrid I mean, want him. They want him and Mbappé both. Yeah, but we know that City have 100-150 million. Remember, they, they wanted to spend on Kane. If they wanted 100 million, they've got 50 for Ferran. Put it all on Haaland. Worth it, man. 
I think 150 mm-hmm. for Ireland is absolutely worth it. What yeah. a player he's going to be going forward. That's that. Uh, Marshall wants to leave. Nobody wants to buy. Sevilla has put in a loan <laughs> request. The loan no, but, so, yeah. Sevilla said we'll only pay half the salary and United are like, we'll keep him. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> most, the most embarrassing thing for me right now as a United fan is Newcastle really want Kieran Trippier to come mm. and join them. I think if the right amount of money is being paid, which is petty change for Newcastle right now, it's going to be very, very embarrassing for mm. United to play player that they wanted really in the summer. That's about it. I think let's come back next week. I think we'll come back in the new year now already. Oh, uh, yeah. It's the, yes. We'll cover the matches and then there's a long break. With um, with some stupid just just to go back to something we we missed out earlier because neither of us knew the code. So our producer Surohini has kindly lent us the code. Woo-hoo! If you're still listening in, it is three H D R U Y to join the football football fantasy Premier League league. I would have loved had she just edited a piece from the previous episode and kind of fitted it in. <laughs> that that would have been kinder on her part. But mm. uh, why not screw us when you have the opportunity, right? <laughs> so that's that. Join, uh, just like how Suroni screwed us, you can join the league and screw me and I hear even more than you have than, than a lot of other people have been doing right now. Uh, but the real competition that you have is going to be Shivra. Uh, he's, he's, he's made the most of his... Uh, it's, it's a sabbatical when you take a three-week chutti, right? <laughs> not a three-week holiday. It's a, I, I'm calling it a sabbatical. I don't care what Shivram says. But he's been doing an awful lot of reading on FPL and tips, etc. Pretty soon, he's going to have one of those faceless accounts on Twitter that he's going to run on FPL tips. He's doing pretty well. That's that from Ayer, me and you. Let's go yeah, back. I, to I just want to say matches. one thing before because we don't have a name hmm. for the episode. And I'm pretty sure that this is a movie. First, I want to apologize to anyone listening in for your absolute foul mouth behavior during this entire episode. You have used very unparliamentary language. So, I am allowed. Uh, okay, yes, it's not even been are, 24 hours since that episode. You are allowed. And I've just Googled to realize that there is a Hindi movie from 1944 called Gali. So, let's oh. just go with that for as the day of this episode. Because we clearly don't have any other uh, reference points to reach at when it comes to Bollywood and and your... your no, no, Gali, Gali is good. Gali is good. It also, you just like spoke my mind, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just like a little more subtlety and poise. <laughs> Let's just call it Gali. <laughs> I'll see you, man. Happy New Year. Uh, Happy New Year to you listening. To I hear to you as well. Shivram, who's not present, but is always mm-hmm. around, hovering somewhere. And to all the listeners, listener, listeners, I hope it's plural, who've been part of uh, our journey for the past season. Very, very happy New Year. Stay indoors as much as possible because of what's happening outside. This is something we'll keep telling you every quarter. But that is the reality right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't party too much or part, party safely. Thank you for listening. Thank you for all the love in this year. We'll see you on in 2022 now with hopefully better results for the teams that I hear and I support. Bye-bye. See you on the other side. Bye. So if you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network. You can listen to us on the IBM podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media handles. We are at IBM podcast on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I'm Fickleberry Hun on Twitter and Instagram. That's Huckleberry Finn, but Fickle. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, I am Sapre on Twitter and G Sapre on Instagram. You can reach out to me at Irant, which is I-Y-E-R-A-N-T on Twitter and Instagram. This is Football Should Ball Recognize. Hey everybody, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On Cyrus Says, it's all about food. Cyrus is in conversation with Vikas Khanna, chef, restauranteur, author and judge on MasterChef India. They discuss Vikas's new book, Barkat. On Misconduct, Raghvi and Nisha throw it back to all the female criminals from season one of the show. On The Habit Coach with Ashton Doctor, philosopher and guru Gautam Jain shares some actionable habits to strengthen our minds. On The Longest Constitution, Priya explains how India's first guidelines of sexual harassment at the workplace came to be. And on Audio Gyan, editor Divya Jyoti Sarma walks Keda through the journey of publishing a poetry book. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, 
please do tell a friend. We'd also really appreciate any ratings or reviews you can give us on any of the platforms that we're listening on, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or IBM Podcast app. Whatever you're listening, do let us know that you are listening. I'd also like to remind you all that we have a number of YouTube channels where a number of shows are available. You can go to ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube to check out what channels we have. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Cred, Bank of Baroda, CoinSwitch, Kuber, and Intel. Thank you so much for making this possible. Don't you think that if everyone around you is getting smart, you better be smarter? Hey there, I'm the traveling professor Siddharth Deshmukh and I'm back with season two of my podcast to make you smarter. Smarter with Sid. What's this season's focus about? Well, it's about 10 minute nuggets that will make you stand out at work. It's time to go from smart to smarter. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday and become smarter with Sid.